H2K Infosys provides world-class online IT training, staffing and software testing solutions to customers worldwide. H2K Infosys supports 100% job-oriented training, hands-on project work, cloud test lab, resume preparation and review, mock interviews, robust syllabus, one-time pay, lifetime access to live classes and videos. H2K Infosys has won the trust of thousands of students worldwide. For free demo class, visit h2kinfosys.com. give you a brief introduction about myself. So my name is Ritu Malhotra. I have done my B.Tech Computer Science and I have been working in the IT industry for more than 12 years and currently I am associated with H2K and Forces as a faculty here. So this is about myself. Uh, so Francis, would you be going ahead and sharing something about yourself also before we start? Okay, so let's go ahead with the particular presentation here. So what is the agenda for today's thing? It is a one hour session. We will be talking about H2K and courses, what we do as a company. We'll be talking about the course curr curriculum. We will be talking about why is it that you should be associated with H2K and courses. So let's just go ahead and do a quick introduction. So as all of you know, H2K and courses is an e-verified business which is based out of Atlanta. We provide software training to our customers both on-site and online. So if you are based in Atlanta, you can be here on Saturdays, Sundays. That is the time when we take an on-site training. Otherwise, we are available online from Monday to Sunday. We go ahead and help you with the job placement assistance also. And we have a, a, a client a clientele such as GE, at and Dish Network, Well Fargo's, just to go ahead and name uh, some of them. Okay, why do you think that all of you are from non the non-IT background? So why do you think all of you are taking this course? Shouldn't you be doing something, um, something like development or something like that? Why software testing? Does it come to anybody's mind why we are doing this? Why software testing? She's enjoying. Okay. Okay. It's the same thing. My sister started when she couldn't complete it. Okay. She said it's better to start with myself. Okay. Same thing. I was trying to get some of these things. Okay. Perfect. So the the main reason, you know, why people are doing courses in software testing is because this is not very technical. So even you are from the non-IT background, it is very simple for you to understand. So tomorrow, let's say, today if you have to go to the market and you want to buy a bag, or if you want to buy a shirt, what are you going to do? You are going to check what is the color, what is the material, do you like it, the size, what are you doing? A kind of testing, yes, check. So these days there are so many softwares that are available, whether you go online shopping at eBay, Amazon.com, whether you go to Walmart, like here also, uh, there is somebody who is working at the dentist's office. Usha is working at the dentist's office, so she is using a software. So these days, there is so much of demand for softwares. So obviously, you have to have testers to test them before you can actually take those softwares to the market. So that's why the job market is also very good when it comes to software testing. So that is the reason why more people are being pulled into the IT world and especially software testing. So if you are not from the technical background, it, it's not, it is something, it's not rocket science, you will be able to understand easily. Once you get the concepts, the concepts don't change. So even if you are like, you know, there are a lot of people like, you know, who take up this course and they did some kind of a training or they worked in the IT industry, let's say 10 years back and they are coming back after a break. So maybe there is a tool called uh, a tool called quality center these days and that time it was called test director maybe 10 years back. So do you understand the concept that the concepts don't change. So once you have the knowledge that stays as it is, it's just that you have to keep building on it basically. So here um, that's why there are so many IT jobs in the market and all of us know that this is a very stable career. 
so what i would like to tell you here is please don't look for a job what i want you to do is i want you to look for a career so there is a difference between the two if you look for a job you will take this course and you will be waiting like you know okay now i should get a job but if you look for a career you will you will try to increase your knowledge maybe taking one more course or if not taking a course maybe you would want to do a certification if not certification maybe you want to be associated with the technical world by you know checking what are the latest webinars that are there in the market so whatever it is so you have to be like you know from day one it's not that you are looking for a job you are looking for a career so that is what is you have to keep in your mind that is very very important if you're looking for a career job will obviously come to you so that is that goes hand in hand now let's just try to understand that what are the courses that are offered here so we go ahead and offer courses such as testing in that you have manual automation there is performance testing sap testing mainframe testing j unit etl unix linux mobile testing web services just to name a few when it comes to the qa testing then we have advanced courses in automation testing that is qtp which is known as your uft now there are advanced courses in performance testing and you have your load runner here which you, which you will be learning as a part of this course then other than this we have courses in ba we have courses in project management there are courses in java j2e there are courses in microsoft dotnet technology one more thing i'd like to tell you here is if you look for a job as a developer then your field is restricted to one language so if you are a java developer you can only work in projects which are related to java if you are a dotnet developer you can only work for projects which are related to dotnet but if you are a tester you can be associated with any project whether whether it's java whether it's dotnet anything right so again your scope of getting a job as a tester increases because your uh, looking for a job is not dependent on a technology it is dependent on it being a software then we have courses on data warehousing informatica there are business objects intelligence there are sap modules such as hr bi fi so finance so all these are modules you can do this kind of a course also you can do courses as a dba oracle dba sql server dba then you can learn tools like selenium so what i would suggest is that you start with this course you take up this course and you learn about manual and you learn about your uft tool and then later if you think you are comfortable with this much and you want to learn another tool you can go ahead with another tool called selenium so most of mostly uh, these are the two tools which are being used uh, in the different projects so if you learn these two tools that should be more than sufficient for you then other than that there are courses in hadoop big data and so on so these are the courses that are offered uh, as per the um as per htk courses now let's come back to our course what are we going to learn here during this um tenure that you're going to be spending with the htk courses for your manual and automation course first we are going to talk about basics so what do i exactly mean by basics basics is like all of you are from the non it background so maybe you do not understand terms like what is a three tier architecture uh, what is a database so first we are going to go through all these basic terms so that we can explain it to you what it is all about then we are going to go ahead and talk about all the uh, so this is something known as software development life cycle so sdlc is software development life cycle now what do you exactly mean by software development life cycle so whenever we are going ahead and developing a software there are certain steps that are associated with it so what are those steps now you might think that i am a tester so why do i need to learn about the software development life cycle but here it is more important for you to get a bigger picture so you should understand that how is the software how the software is being developed what are the various steps and as a tester where do you fit in so here it is going to be like you know talking about so for developing software there are different methodologies so there are methodologies such as waterfall there is methodology such as agile so we are going to go ahead and talk about all these methodologies in detail so we are not just going to talk about the theory here we are also going to talk talk in terms of practically 
but how the waterfall and agile is implemented in a project if you're working in the real world. So this will make you, so we'll take an example, we'll take an example of one project and we'll say that if it is working in the waterfall, this is how it is done. If it is done in the agile, this is how it's done. So that you get a clarity. Then we are going to go ahead and talk about all the different basic terms. Again, basic terms and there are a lot of uh, uh, terms that are used in uh, the uh, testing world. What is a module? What, what are the different types of testing? What is a functionality? What is exploratory testing? What is user acceptance testing? What is unit testing, integration testing? What is a browser compatibility testing? So there are a lot of testing and we will go ahead and discuss all these things here because as a tester, you should be aware because tomorrow they might go ahead and put you in a performance testing project. So if you don't know what is performance testing, it's going to be difficult for you. So we are going to go ahead and understand all the basic testing terms here. Once we've done all these things and we've got the basic concepts clear, then we are going to start the actual work wherein we are going to go ahead and um, start with understanding the requirements. So what do I mean by requirements? So here we actually have these kind of requirements. We have some examples that we've created for all of you. So this is how a requirement looks like. So as you can see this document here, it is telling you that how will the screen look like? It is telling you that what is the requirement that, you know, if you go ahead and type www.gmail.com in a browser, then the main page should open and the username and the password text box and sign in button should appear. So this is a requirement. So what are you going to do as a tester? As a tester, this is what you need to test. So we are going to start by understanding the requirements. So when I say here, we will be understanding the requirements. So we already have such kind of requirements that are created with us. We'll share the requirements with you and whatever we are going to do now is going to be completely hands-on. That means we want you to go ahead and see how exactly it is done in the IT world. Once we are done with the requirements, there is some understood the requirements, there is something known as the requirement traceability matrix. So what do you mean by the requirement traceability matrix? Requirement traceability matrix is basically an RTM where you are, wherein you are going to go ahead and write all the requirements. So what is the RTM? What is the format for the RTM? So for each requirement that we pick up, we will be writing the RTM. So the format is there. We will be sharing the format with you and we will be doing it hands-on in the class itself. So it's not that, you know, I'm just going to be talking and explaining it to you. You are also supposed to do it here hands-on. We learn how we can create test data. What is test data? What is the use of test data? And then we are going to go ahead and write the test cases. So these are the main things as a tester. So if you look at the roles and responsibilities of a tester, So what is the first thing that you are doing? You are understanding the requirements. Once you've understood the requirements, you are supposed to write the test cases. Now before this, you might be creating the RTM as per the requirement of the project. If you are creating it, then that this is going to be the second step. And then you are going to go ahead and write the test cases and you will create the test data. And then once you've created the test, uh, test cases, you are going to execute these test cases. Once you've executed the test cases, if there is any error, you will go ahead and log a bug. So these things are not going to change whatever project you join. You will have to understand requirements. You will be writing test cases. You will be executing test cases. And then if there is any error, you will be logging a bug. So what do you mean by if there is an error, you will log a bug? That means if, so, so here um, you're going to go ahead and log a bug. So here, when is it that we call it as a, a bug? So here there is something known as the requirement and then you get the actual software. So whatever is written in the requirement, if it is, if that is not being done in the actual software itself, does this make sense to everybody? So let's say if we tell you that 11 o'clock there is a class 
that is the requirement that has been shared to you just for an example and now if i if you come here and the class is not there at 11 o'clock it does not match the requirement so there is a problem here so there is a bug so just to understand let's say all of you want to build a house so you give a requirement of a two bedroom whereas you give given a requirement of a three bedroom so once you are checking as per the requirements if they have built a two bedroom there is no problem but if they haven't built a two bedroom then there is a bug which needs to be fixed so this is what you are doing as a tester and this is what is your roles and responsibilities then we are going to talk about software testing life cycle so what exactly do you mean by software testing life cycle software testing life cycle is the steps that when you go ahead and test what are the steps that you need to follow so is there some preparation need to be done in which step you are going to execute the test cases in which step you are creating or writing the test cases so this is what we are going to learn here now here once you are done with this we are going to learn some tools also so the first tool that we are going to learn is known as the quality center now here this is a test management tool now with the test management tool what exactly do i mean by the test management tool this tool so till now maybe when we were writing the requirements we were creating the test cases we were executing the test cases all the things we were doing in using an excel sheet but we are going to learn to do all these things in the tool so there is a separate team that is there who will help you install this particular uh, software on your machines and then i will be doing one step and then i will give you some time to do it on your machine so again everything is hands on so it's not that you know you are supposed to learn or you on your own or if you're getting stuck there is no help so again you will i will do a particular step and then i wait for you to go ahead and execute it and then we see that you are also able to do the same thing or not then we are going to learn something known as sql so sql is structured query language so what do you mean by a structured query language structured query language is the language which is used to query the database now we'll go into the detail what is a database and for this we will be installing toad on your machine so toad is a tool using which you can connect to the database and this query will help you query the database so how does this exactly work we will understand that so here there is a lot of syntax that you need to uh, go ahead and learn so we will be learning all the syntax for this that what is the syntax for sql query how do you write it how do you use it and all that then we will also learn about unix so here as you can see this course is not just limited to a little bit of manual concept no it's a complete package so when you go for a job in the market if you just say that you know i just know the manual testing concepts it will be very difficult for you to go ahead and you know get a job but if you say that you know okay i know manual i know sql i know quality center i know unix and i know automation definitely you have more chances of getting a job now once this part is over we start with the uft and the performance tool which is known as load runner so here also there will be separate classes for this you can go ahead and log on to these classes or you can uh, if you are based out of atlanta on the weekends you can come here on site and take the classes here then there will be classes on etl what exactly is etl there will be an instructor who will go ahead and tell you the mobile testing web services so all this will be taught to you now again mobile testing is really picking up these days so why are we going ahead and giving you so much of information because tomorrow let's say now you know what is uh, mobile testing what is web services testing if you want to go ahead and specialize in one of these you can so we we are giving you an idea now it is up to you what is it that you want to go because for for this particular testing there can be so many branches maybe you really like sql and you want to be a database tester you can maybe you really like the mobile testing part of it you can be a you can uh, take up a detail or advanced course in this or otherwise you don't have to but this is just to give you a basic flavor of what all is the latest technology that is there in the market at this point of time and then we'll also go ahead and talk about different projects now why are we talking about projects so we we'll talk about a project in a healthcare domain we'll talk about a project in um, a banking domain with you to give you a brief about the domain plus make you understand that whatever you have learned till now how is that um, how can all that be used or implemented in a project 
So whatever concepts you've learned, agile, um, smoke testing, exploratory testing, writing test cases, now everything will be done with respect to a particular project. So it helps you kind of, if you're from the non-IT background, it really helps you sink in to understand that how are these concepts mapped onto a project. So it will just make a kind of clarity to you. So this is as far as the syllabus is concerned. Any uh, questions with respect to the syllabus? Any questions with respect to the syllabus? Anything that comes to your mind and it is always very important to ask questions because if you ask questions then I can know um, that like you know where I can go ahead and help you. Any questions till now? Yeah it is. It will take time. It will take time and don't be in a hurry also because if you are from a non-IT background and you get overwhelmed with too much of information, the only rule that you have to remember is that whatever you study here, try to revise it that very day. Or at least like, you know, you have that one week to revise it. So I understand that all of you are working and you know, you already have tight schedules. But don't think that I'll do it later. And then it'll just keep on filing. Now let's try to understand that why exactly should you go ahead and be associated with H2K Enforces. So the responsibility of the tester is to detect a bug. Yes, that is one of the responsibilities of a tester to go ahead and find a bug. And when can you say there is a bug? When the requirements are not being met, Francis. So for that first you will have to understand the requirements properly because if you yourself are not clear about the requirements then you won't be able to find the bugs in the actual software. So here there is a huge course syllabus. So H2K Enforce is the only training center in the world who can cover many topics in QA testing, like I told you there is mobile testing, ETL, there is going to be a lot of things that you are going to learn here, not only the manual concepts. So here there is a free demo before you go ahead and make the payment. You can take that free demo if you want, if you like the course you can take it and if you don't like it you can let go of it. There is a lifetime access to topic wise live uh, videos to watch anytime before or after the live class and you can prepare for the next. Now these classes are instructor led. They are face to face so obviously there is somebody who can answer your questions. All the material and software they will be given to you for your hands on practice. Now again for each topic we create some material or we go ahead and share the, uh, some material with you. You can go ahead and refer to that material and videos. Again here once you are done with the course, you have completed the course with us, you can go ahead and get your resume also reviewed. So you create your resume, so we already have a team in place who can go ahead and review the resume that has been created by you. You can attend, uh, again these uh, interviews are faculty driven mock interviews and there are, uh, you, they are unlimited. It's not fixed like you know two, three or whatever. So you can attend these um, faculty driven mock interviews. Again, if you don't want to be a part of the mock interview, you can be a silent listener. So there might be somebody else who might be giving in an interview and you can keep doing this till the time you are comfortable to go ahead and give an interview. So you can be a listener, a spectator to all these mock interviews. So the course is done. Uh, we are done with the resume. We are done with the mock interview and now you can actually go ahead and take interviews out in the real world. So there will be homeworks, assignments, there will be review work that will be given to you. Now as you can see this training is based on the latest technology in the current job market. So here in edge to pain courses there is a website here where you can go ahead and see all the material is posted there. There is review, you can access the public websites such as Google+, Kudzu, Facebook, YouTube to see that what are the reviews that have been posted for a particular faculty. So this is what I had to share about the demo. Now if you have any questions feel free to ask me so that I can go ahead and answer all your questions. So any questions you have. How soon? Yeah. Okay, so now that really depends from person to person. 
if you think that uh, like you know you are after the course you are working hard you are revising you are learning so whatever you do here and you are able to go ahead and um, do it hands on i would say at least it will take you uh, maybe um, two two and a half months three months to learn the entire thing and then if you are ready you can go ahead and start coding your resume what if the uh, Pardon? You won't be able to finish the course in one month. No, what I mean is you, you don't have to finish the course to be able to do the project. No, the project actually what happens is everything is in a sequence here. So once so the how are the classes scheduled? At first you'll have the classes for the manual. Then you're going to go ahead and have classes for the automation and the performance tool. Then you're going to come in the end with the project. Because if I start with the project right now, you won't be able to understand because we don't have the testing concepts with us right now. So everything has to happen in a sequence. So uh, Francis here, uh, how it actually works is that um, uh, you have to go ahead and type the question, but if you want to go ahead and talk, then you have to let me know. I can go ahead and unmute you. So, because what happens is there are a lot of people who are logged on at this point of time, and if I unmute everybody, then it becomes a total chaos. So if you, the best way is to just go ahead and type a question, but if there's something which you feel you do not want to type and you want to go ahead and talk, then you can let me know and I can go ahead and unmute you. Anything that comes to your mind, Usha, that you would like to know or the rest of the people who are online? Usha, Alam, Kamal, Anupama, anything that I can help you with? Yes, you can. You will be getting emails. So what hap how does it work here is that whenever there is a class here, there is a class online also. So you will be sent a link to your email whether you use that link or you don't use that link that is completely up to you. So definitely you are going to go ahead and get a link and the day you cannot come here you are most welcome to join the class wherever you are. Yeah. Yes. If I have some more, uh, I, mean, I, can, I can go with you and not on that. So can I uh, join that class like in weekdays? You can. But again, it depends. Which faculty you want to join or if it's the same faculty that you are st uh, doing the course with, that faculty has, uh, like, you know, like you might be doing SQL here and they might be doing quality center there. So it really depends. You have to find that kind of a match for the class. But yes, you can. Will it cover BA concepts? No, it does not cover BA concepts. BA is a separate course. And this is just basically your QA manual and automation. How do I judge if I'm suitable for this course? Okay. So here, let me go ahead and ask you one question. Are you good at understanding concepts? Are you good at basically, you know, going ahead and documenting? Are you good at finding mistakes? I'm sure that everybody is good at. It's so easy to find mistakes in others, you know, that's the easiest thing to do. Okay, so again, you have an eye for detail. You have good communication skills. Are you a fast paced learner? So these are some of the things. Uh, documenting not much. When I say documented, what I mean to say is that, you know, when you are creating test cases and all these things, you will be going ahead and doing some kind of documentation. But believe me, it is nothing that you do not know or you cannot learn. That I can assure you, Usha. So again, if you are good at understanding concepts, once you understand how to write the test cases, you are good at finding mistakes or rather say let's you are good at finding bugs, you have an eye for detail, 
you are you are good with your communication skills you are a fast paced learner so if you have all these things and definitely you, you are at the right place and again like i said it is not very technical so believe me it will not take you much time to uh, learn all these things and once you learn the concepts the concepts remain the same they don't change so does that answer your question usha perfect usha any more questions guys the best thing is that you have to learn to ask a lot of questions i should dread coming to work on saturday sundays that is the way you should trouble me so if you ask questions that mean yes i mean i also feel like you know at least you are able to understand what i am saying so anything else that i can go ahead and help you with see as far as learning the concepts is concerned that you don't have to worry about because uh, sometimes what happens is because people are from the non it background it takes them a little time to understand so that's perfectly fine you can go ahead and ask me a concept one time or 10 times so i am never going to say no to it so that way you don't have to worry about it so you for me for, for me to make you understand a concept that is my responsibility but beyond that to put in the hard work to kind of do a lot of r and d go through different websites all that is your job and when you attend the mock interviews you get to know know the kind of questions that you will be asked in the interview your resume is being helped with you have your and one more very important point that i forgot to mention here is that once you are associated with h2k in courses you are associated for a lifetime so like you know 6 months down the line you feel you know what oh, i have forgotten quality center and i want to take the classes again you, you are you are most welcome to come back or sometimes you know students they go through one batch and they feel you know they've learned it but they want to do it one more time they come back and we put them in another batch if you go ahead and do the same course with other people you um you might be paying more money you will not be getting so many classes plus once you've done the course with them that is after 3 months you cannot go back to them for anything and whatever you learn with them there is a certain period for which you can access so you know they've given them uh, the login to the tools and everything maybe just for 6 months or 1 year and once they that one year is done they go ahead and just like you know um, take away access to all the tools but that's not going to happen with you you have access to the tools and everything the course the material the videos for a lifetime so that is a very big thing <clears throat>